Hi, uh, my name's Chris, Chris Hadfield, and this is Albert, and we wanted to read you the story of The Darkest Dark. There's me, Chris, and there's Albert, standing on the dock, right there. The Darkest Dark. You may have a copy of the book in front of you. I'll hold the pages up for you in a minute. Right, Albert? The Darkest Dark. Chris was an astronaut. There's Albert looking at me in my spaceship. Chris was an astronaut, an important and very busy astronaut. When it was time to take a bath, I'm running down the hall there with Albert. When it was time to take a bath, he told his mother, I'd love to, but I'm saving the planet from aliens. There Albert and I are in the bath with our space helmets on. And when it was time to get out of the bath and go to bed, Chris told his father, politely, because astronauts are always polite, sorry, no can do, I'm on my way to Mars. An astronaut's work is never done. So astronauts do not like to sleep. Look carefully at the picture. Albert, Albert, you looking at the picture? If you look carefully at the picture, you can see there are some little people joining Albert and me there in my bedroom. Imaginary people. I used to think of them as aliens. Astronauts do not like to sleep, but their parents do. There's Chris and Albert in bed with his parents. You're a big boy now, said Chris's father. You have to sleep in your own bed. You doing okay, Albert? Yeah. And Chris tried. He really, really did. But his room was very dark. You wanna get down? Okay, you can get down. His room was very dark. Very, very dark. The kind of dark that attracts the worst sort of alien. But his parents meant it. Chris was going to sleep in his own bed tonight. So his mom and his dad checked under his bed and in the closet and even in his underwear drawer. They declared the room was 100% alien free. Look at Albert. Got a sock in his mouth. They tucked Chris in. They turned on the nightlight. There's the nightlight there. They even gave him a special bell to ring in case he got nervous. Clang, 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 clang. They took away the bell. And then his father said something that worried Chris even more than the dark did. One more peep, young man, and I'm afraid that we'll all be too tired to go next door tomorrow. But tomorrow would be a special day, a very special day. Chris had to go next door. His life pretty much depended on it. So Chris stayed in his own bed without a peep. It took a long time to fall asleep, but when he did, he had his favorite dream. He flew his spaceship all the way to the moon. It says right there, Chris and Albert. Right, Albert? Yeah. The next day seemed to last forever, but finally, when the moon was shining over the lake and the summer wind was ruffling the leaves of the trees, Chris ran next door. The house was already full of people, all gathered around the TV, the only TV on the whole island. Chris found a spot where he could see through the crowd, and what he saw was astronauts 
real live astronauts on the actual faraway moon. They were wearing puffy white suits and jumping for joy, jumping so high because there was so much less gravity there. The grown-ups huddled around the TV were amazed. Their whole lives long, they'd never expected to see this sight. Even Chris, who had been to the moon just the night before, was amazed. He'd never really noticed how dark it was. Outer space was the darkest dark ever. There's Chris outside that night on the island looking up at the moon with Albert. Right, Albert? That night, Chris did a little experiment. He turned off all the lights in his room, even the nightlight. It was still dark, very, very dark, and there were still shadows that looked a little, well, alien. Nothing had changed, but Chris had changed. He'd seen that the darkness of the universe... <coughs> you want up, Albert? Okay, you can come on. Come on, come sit up with me. Come on. Chris had seen that the darkness of the universe was so much bigger and deeper than the darkness in his room. But he was not afraid. He wanted to explore every corner of the night sky. For the first time, Chris could see the power and the mystery and the velvety black beauty of the dark. And he realized, you're never really alone there. Your dreams are always with you. Just waiting, big dreams, about the kind of person you want to be. Wonderful dreams about the life you will live. Dreams that actually can come true. Right, Albert? Is that a nice story? The darkest dark. Hope you get a chance to read the book yourself, too. Albert and I wish you be well, sweet dreams. And don't be afraid. The dark is for dreaming.